Um, we have a new member tonight, Rob Chatfield. Um, where, Rob, where do you live? What's your uh, 22 Beacon Lane. Great. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And um, why don't we just go around the... Jim Walsh. Jay Chatman. And Len Galino, Chair. First order of business is to approve the minutes of the March 28, 2006, our last meeting. Any comments on them, those minutes? Changes? I have one on page two, line 13, uh, uh, about the middle of the sentence. With should read more correctly, within. That's the only correction I have. Okay. I had a line 13 with should be within. Thank you. Um, I had a change or two. First on page two, line 22, um, after where it says Mr. Glino thank the applicant, it should be inserted for seeking input about about the applicant's proposals proposal from neighbors. And then on page three. Line eight, where it says, Mr. Galino stated that the applicant did not appear to meet the standards to grant the variance, should add comma, and the applicant agreed, period. That's all the changes I have. Any other changes? I move to accept the minutes as amended. Thank you. Could I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Minutes are approved unanimously. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, uh, I don't believe we have any old business, do we, Bruce? No, we don't. Okay. New business for today is to hear the request of Richard L. Armstrong, fire, 5 Ironclad Road, tax map U08, lot 6, for an easterly side property line variance of 10 feet from the required 25 feet and a westerly side property line variance of 9 feet from the required 25 feet to do additions at 15 and 16 feet respectively from their side property lines. Um, do we have the applicant here this evening? Yes. Would you approach the podium and please state your name and your address? Uh, Richard Armstrong, 5 Ironclad Road, Keep Elizabeth. Great. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to go ahead and proceed with your presentation. Um, I believe you all have a copy of this 18-page <coughs> submission. Yes. Haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, uh, first of all, this um, we've owned this house now about two and a half years. The folks who owned it before us uh, bought it in uh, the early 80s, I believe, and they added um, some space to it. He was a self-described um, uh, steel and glass architect in the houses. Originally, it was built in the 20s. It was a cottage-style home, and it's kind of been um, modified, maybe not in the most architecturally pleasing way. So one of the things we're trying to do is make it look better by um, <clears throat> reshingling the side, wood shingles, and the roof needs work. and. Uh, and the deck that was there is now gone. So we're proposing uh, to make some changes that we believe will uh, make, a big, make for a better appearing house. Um, I think the way to do this thing, unless it is not necessary, is to go through this thing just page by page. And I think it'll take about five minutes. Sure, so that's fine. If you want to. The only thing on the agenda tonight, so we don't have to push you along. <laughs> We don't have to stay here all night either. No, that's true. Um, well, the first three pages are the application. I'm not sure if anybody has any comment or question on that at this time, but maybe we can come back to it if there are. Uh, page four, down in the right-hand corner, I, I numbered them uh, by hand and circled the numbers. So page four of 18 is... Uh, can we just back up for one second sure. on the first, uh, onto the application? Just so I make sure I understand this, your current easterly side back, setback is 23 feet, but, and you want to go to 15? Uh, the deck that was there, and I dismantled the deck earlier, uh, late last week, after um, Mr. Smith told me I could, uh, was at 23 feet. It's now gone, so um, 
And, and yes, we do want to go an additional to 15. total of seven. And the current west side is 15 feet, and you want to increase that to 16? Uh, the current, the, the edge of the house at the closest point to the property line is 15 feet. And the roof, what we propose to do is to, to uh, demo, demo the roof and make a dustpan roof out of it. And that would exist about, the new construction would be about a foot inboard from that 15 foot um, setback. So you're going to become 16. more conforming by one foot on that side? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And on the rear, you had 105 as the current, and the proposed is not going to change? Uh, I'm sorry. The, yes, that's correct. Yeah, we, we don't go outside of the footprint on either the south side or north side. It's just Thank the you. east and west sides. Great. Go ahead. Proceed. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Um, we had a survey, although it wasn't a full-blown survey done on, um, uh, in uh, July of 2003 by Dan D'Alfonso. This is a copy of the original. This is the base. <coughs> It's the same as is in here. Yeah, you can. yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And the next page is uh, my it was my attempt to answer the uh, request in the uh, in the instructions to provide a overview of what we're proposing to do, and I did that. I I. Uh, showed the expansions in red and called them proposed. So if you orient yourself with north to the left, the sunroom ports that we're proposing is on the east side, and that's where the 15-foot uh, offset would occur. And the second level elongated proposal uh, in this view, is on the west side, and that's where the 16-foot uh, setback would occur. Is that back the second area where it says proposed on the back side of the house? Does that increase the height of the building? The, the height of the building, no. It goes. It would go from the gable, and that'd be about a 112 pitch. So, no. Okay. Uh, and there are some other, you know, the septic system, rock wall, and the surrounding properties are shown there. Uh, page six is um, a survey that we did of the um, surrounding properties. And for each of these properties, and there are a total of 13, principal I only showed the principal structures, uh, and there are a total of 13 principal structures, and the closest offset, or the closest setback to the um, to any one property line is shown for each of the structures. Um, of the 13, only three of these principal structures are not within the present 25-foot setback requirement, but they're almost all 20s and 30s structures. Did you do this yourself, sir? Well, I participated. I'm. Uh, I'm an engineer. I don't have a registered land survey. I'm a licensed engineer, but not a land surveyor. But I did it with a, um, with a surveyor who works for a construction company in Freeport. Uh, we did it with an uh, uh, electronic total station that's accurate within a few millimeters. Yeah. Um, so the NA that you have on the chart references the three that... Correct. ...that didn't, didn't fit in the... It references the three that have no setback violations. They're all more than 25 feet okay. from any property line. I guess that wasn't in the light clear. Which ones are those that have no violations? Well, if you go to page 11, <coughs> in the far left-hand column, uh, items 7, 8, and 13 and then follow those all the way over to the last column to the right where it says N slash A. So the Herchebees, Jeunesse, and that new one down there, Morse, Misenfeld, uh, all are, most of them are at least 35 feet from the... Uh, Would you restate what you just said, please? Excuse me? Would you please restate your point? Uh, I didn't hear you clearly. Sure. Regarding the NA on the th last column. Um, 
the last column shows the closest setback in feet. And I just didn't bother to measure what they were if they were greater than 25 feet from the sides. Okay. So all, all three of these properties, although I think the Jadas property may be too close to the road by today's standard, it's not a front setback that we're talking about here. It's, it's the side setback. So I didn't even look at that. I just looked at side. So they're the included, side. but you just yep. including the comparables. You just didn't, that, that three that don't help you. Right. Well, there are three that don't violate. And, and I, later on, I averaged them just to, just for the heck of it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Did, well, since you commented on that, I, did, did you include those numbers in your calculation? Yes. It, it, the square footage, yes. No, I, I, that side set back. no, I didn't. I could do it pretty quickly. I could guesstimate them. But I only did it as a, uh, I, I describe it on page 11 down in, in the lower right as the average side setback of all neighboring non-conforming lots. But I can guess at it. I, I would guess it would probably go up to about 14 feet if you added those three in. Do, do you have those actual numbers with No. You? I can scale them off though, I have a scale here. And, and the reason why I ask is typically uh, the ordinance states the 10 nearest properties, and you provided 13, which is fine, but uh, it, it's not up to your discretion to pick which 10 you want to choose. And, and so if you include all 13, we should have numbers of, for all 13. Okay. Well, the numbers are here. It's, 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 I can provide those. I understand my point. We, we, we don't want you to pick the ones you want to pick. If the numbers, the reference, as far as closest 10, should be the closest 10, and you should document all those. Well, points. perhaps I provided too much information. The point I made was that 10 of the 13 of the neighboring properties, and, and actually, from my, from my perspective, although it wasn't clear to me exactly what was meant by the ordinance, and, by the, and I began doing this on a Friday. Unfortunately, Bruce was sick that day, and it was due on Monday, so I worked out through the weekend. So there was, and I tried to get an interpretation, but um, it just it was not clear. So my point was that 10 of the 13 of the neighboring properties um, have setback uh, have setbacks that are inside the existing 25 foot requirement. But just in counter to what you said, the ordinance says the 10 nearest properties, and and that's that's my point. I see. The 10 nearest is the 10 nearest. You can go to 15, 20. Say again? You can go further, though. Of you course. Pull in. But we would, we just, for our sake, we wanted to see that the measurements for the 10 nearest. You can include as many as you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Um, well, if you just want to see the 10 nearest, you could stop at item 10. But. So where's uh, um, item 13 on the map? I see it on your chart. It is. is. Right yeah, there. I think I, uh, that is lot nine. If you look at page six, yep. that's lot nine. And I think I, well, I expanded the key down here and I erased the name Morris Misenfeld. It's lot nine is that brand new it's house. new house being built or yep. by, uh, by Rainbow Construction. The one with the red barn, bright red barn. Just offshore. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I left off at page six, although we jumped ahead a little bit. But the but seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven are pictures of the thirteen principal structures that are listed on the following page. Uh, actually, the first three are our house at five ironclad.
So basically, if I read this correctly, it's basically the oceanfront homes meet the setback requirements, and then everything on your side of the street, uh, they're all basically encroaching or grandfathered. Well, if you look at the map on page 6, the lots that meet the existing 25-foot setback by at least 25 feet are lot 9, lot 8, Lot one, just lot of the fire and shore. Uh, lot nine, new place on singles, and uh, Hurtubis lot, lot uh, eight. What about lot seven? Good. Lot seven, uh, if you look um, if you look at the cross-hatched area and the, and the, uh, the arrows just above where, where lot seven is printed, you'll see that oh, yeah, 17.8 17 .8 feet. And on page uh, 11 on your, the last column setback, mm -hmm. do those all refer to side setback? Is that correct? They, they are side setbacks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I neglected to labor it, label it that way. It should, it should read side set, setbacks to the. In, in the setback column, the measurements you included only refer to left or right side Correct. Setback. Thank you. Yes. So if there are no questions about the pictures, um, the point of page 11 is to, is to average the size of the neighboring properties, which is done on the left-hand side of the page under one, two, three, four, fifth column to the right, the first column to the left, for a total of 43,867 square feet, and dividing that by 13, you come up with 3,374 uh, square feet for the 13 and moving to the right our existing floor area is 2758 we're proposing to add 273 feet on the first level and 184 feet on the second level uh, for a total of 3215 or for a gain of approximately well 457 square feet Page 12 is an architectural perspective of the north. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, if I could yes. just ask you a question about sure. the calculations. So if I understand your calculations of side setbacks, uh, basically <clears throat> when you say you average the side setback of all neighbors' non-conforming lots at 11.6, that is all of you took the 10 yes. houses that were non-conforming and averaged up. That's correct. Okay. And then the average side setback of all neighbor non-conforming lots of garages eliminated, that's 13.2. There, there are two garages down there in, uh, off Delano number five, belonging to the uh, Heather Dallas and the Brill family. Yeah. And I, it, I just threw that in there because I, I didn't know whether that would be an issue or not. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, page 12 is a uh, um, architectural pers perspective of the east and north sides of the, uh, of the house, and I've shown the new portion, which appears to the far left of the page. Yeah. How deep is the porch? Uh, the porch is six feet, and the uh, sunroom next to the house is proposed to be 13 and a half. And the, the existing, uh, or the deck that was there was 12, was, was 12 feet deep. And the, does that addition impact anyone's views? Does it impact? It does not. Doesn't it impact Newcomb's Lot 3's views? It does not. Their views to the Atlantic, I take it, are out into the, I guess it would be what? Yes. Southwest. Or? If, um, 
they're almost they're perpendicular to the Atlantic. The house is situated perpendicular yep. to the, more or less to the shoreline. And and there, I don't show them here, but there are there are trees. Well, if you look on page seven, which uh, which is a the first picture page, uh, the top right picture, which is taken looking taken looking north, you can see our house behind that white arbor, and to the right of it is the lot three house, which belongs to the Newcombs, and that it, that it, that entire corner is all evergreens. There are several evergreens there. And your addition goes on the, to the right of that arbor as we're Correct. looking at it? Correct. And the evergreens are going to stay? One is going to go. The rest are going to stay. The, the one large one will uh, be replaced. Wh whoever did the landscaping on in, in this neighborhood originally did it marvelous job. I mean, the Newcombs and the house to the west of us are, well, the Newcombs are 7.6 feet, I think, from our property corner at the nearest side setback. And the other is uh, <clears throat> 13 feet. But you never know they're there unless the lights are on at night. Well, and then we get into the plans, which I don't know how much detail you want to go with there, but we, the architect we have been working with, is, uh, as mentioned in the application, has a, a strong background in historical renovation and that sort of thing. And, and this is... Who did you design? Uh, a fellow by the name of Glenn Harmon. I'm sorry? Glenn Harmon. He works locally, but freelances on the side. Did, did he do all the sketches? He did the, the yes, the, the last, everything from page 12 on are his, or is his. Page 14 is the second level, which, as pointed out in the application, is essentially a, um, an attic, a finished attic at the moment. Um, it's usable space, but only about half of it is usable. I took some additional pictures today, if I don't know if that would be helpful or not, but I took some internal pictures that show the, uh, what's there now. This doesn't cause creating the finishing off that third floor like that doesn't cause any. If I understand on page 15, this is depicting the new uh, work on the third floor, is it? Uh, the first level is, oh, well, the, the bottom level, I should say, is, is about half finished. It's part basement. and. and living space on the south side. So he chose to call it the ground floor, the first level, and then the second level. I see. And Mr. Smith, that doesn't cause any height issues? It, there's no height issue here. It's, sure. uh, if you average it out around it, I don't believe there is, but we want to make sure that it doesn't exceed the 35 feet. Yep. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Discussions with Mr. Armstrong. Yep.
Any questions on that? The ceilings are about seven and a half feet, so 15 plus, say, 10 is probably peak to ground is probably 25 feet. I could, I could actually scale that. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mr. Smith will check on that for you. Okay. Uh, page 16 is uh, just some additional detail. Uh, the top, the top right, is a section through the second level, which shows the existing roof line and what's proposed for the dustpan. And page 17 is a, uh, an architectural perspective of what that west end of the house on the second level would look like. And I've noted in red what the existing roof lines look, are, except they run the entire length of the house. Um, summary on the last page, and then... Uh, in the last couple of days, I typed up a letter stating that and circulated among, took it among the neighborhood, around the neighborhood, and showed them um, this 18 page submission. And, um, and there's a statement in here that says they have no objections, but there's the original. the names and the lot numbers. A couple of those, one person's in California, I spoke to him by phone yesterday and today, and, uh, and Heather Dallas uh, was not here this weekend, but I spoke to her by phone this afternoon, and they both agreed that I could pencil their names in at the bottom, the last two. The others are signatures. I appreciate you doing that. I always think it's a good idea, personally. Um, Mr. Smith suggested that may be a good idea. He gets the credit. Can get your feet wet. And I'm scaling 26 feet of height from gable to ground. So this, this photo here, if I understand it, just so everybody see, sees what I'm showing them. I understand it, this is the, uh, would be the east side, and this red line here, going like this as a square, is the area we're proposing to extend out to, and this would be the, um, the evergreen that would be going. And the property line is on the east side of this existing wall. Thank you, it's very helpful to look at.
Dr. Chapman, if I could just ask a question. In the past, when we've had these applications, for those folks that are in compliance with the 25-foot setback, for the purposes of calculating, do you just plug in 25 feet, or do you plug in the actual distance that they are? Say that again. <clears throat> for his calculations, he has disregarded the ones that are not applicable. Mm -hmm. In the past, when we've had these come before us, do we normally see the calculation done assuming that those are at 25 feet, which is the setback requirement, or do you use the actual distance uh, from the property line to the house? It could be 40, 50, 100 feet. It, it's, it's my understanding that if it's less than 25, then the absolute number is applicable. Over right. 25, it's a moot point. Is that correct as far as calcul determining the average? Well, we got. If you determine the average, then you really need to include them all. But do you use 25 feet for the ones that are in compliance, or do you use the actual distance? The distance. So, if there are 40 feet from the property line, that goes into the calculation. It should yes. Okay. In. Well, we're not at the discussion point yet. I, I, but I, I, I'll have a comment on that in a moment. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't clear to me. But I, I just threw the average. I threw the average in there because it was an obvious calculation to make. It wasn't clear to me what the average was going to be used for. Yeah. But does does the um, do you have the data of how far lots uh, seven, eight, and thirteen are their minimum their minimum distance from the side setback? Um, Lot seven is 17.8 feet. Uh, that's six, I believe. I'm referring to the ones that you have at NA. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so that would be lot one, nine, and eight. Oh, excuse me. I scale lot one to be 25 feet from the property line along Shore Road. That's the Miesfeld, Morris Miesfeld? No, that's uh, Jeunesse. Oh, Jeunesse, okay. Lot nine, I scale at. It would be nine or seven? Would it be seven? No, seven is Harvey. You, you use the name. He's using lots versus. Oh, I see. You're using item numbers? Yeah, yeah. using your numbers. Okay. Uh, item number seven, which is uh, Gordon Hertzby's, um, I make approximately 80 feet from his east property line. It's closer than that, though. All I have is the, all I have is the garage here. Yeah. Um, the house comes out here. It's, yeah, I would have estimated it to be 60 feet from the east property line. And um, item 13, which is Morris Misenfeld, is uh, 65 feet from the east property line. Recess to take a minute, three minutes to do that calculation? Uh, should take me only about 30 seconds, I think. Okay. If you want to recess. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what? I'm not sure in this situation that it's absolutely relevant, the distance. It's my opinion, based on if, if there were a number that were close or it was 
50 percent or 60 percent. I think it could become a factor of the 13 documented properties. He has numbers for 10, and they are all well below the 25-foot setback. So I'm not sure in this situation it's absolutely relevant. Uh, I'd, it's probably that's I, I'd, not in. I, in res, I don't know. My feelings, based on what Mr. Smith said regarding the absolute number, I, I certainly think that's. I, I'm not sure that how to factor that in if it's in excess of 25 feet. But it, it comes out to about 20 and 20.5 20 feet, 20 and a half feet. So, but in this particular case, I, I'm not sure that it's the absolute numbers are relevant. It's my feeling. Since all, since 10 of 10 documented figures are less than 25 feet, so I'd set back. I just don't think it's a factor and worth con a concern at this time. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that because otherwise you could have all a neighborhood of entirely non-conforming lots except for one lot that had a huge setback and it could throw off the average. Well, that's what I was just wondering is, you know, it's, and that's why I asked the question before, does it 25 feet that you add into the calculation or do you go to the 80 foot? And it, I don't, it just seems to me that the, the relevant number would be um, what you're averaging is the actual, the houses that are in compliance, i.e. 25 feet I think with that, everything well, else. Yeah, and I think it's a good point, the non-conforming the less than the 25 feet. Right. The ones that are conforming could be as close as 25, 25 feet. feet. They could be built right up to the 25 foot line. So the mere fact that they're 80. That's, that's reasonable. Um, strikes me as kind of irrelevant. What I think is relevant is 25 feet. Could you run those calculations, assuming each of those houses were at 25 feet? No. <coughs> I, and I think that's possibly a point that we could look into in the future with yeah. the town attorney to, to determine that too, or to have those comments on that. In, in the, uh, it, I viewed it in, if it's in excess of 25 feet, then it doesn't, it doesn't apply because no variance is, is required, and, and hence they aren't applicable to, to comparative basis. 14.6. 14.6. Yeah. I'd want to check it, but I'm pretty sure that's, I just took the result. That's what I would have guessed. It would have put you right, you're going to just about where you're going for. Further questions? Uh, any further or comments from the applicant? Mm. No. Mr. Smith, do you have anything else to add? No. Um, if uh, you're all set with your presentation, it appears that there's no one in opposition, no one else to support, unless um, I assume this is your wife. Does she want to say anything, or, are we all, or does the applicant close its case? <laughs> the record would reflect the thumbs up. <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> Thumbs up. Well. If you have nothing else, then we'll close the discussion and okay. uh, close the presentation and move to the discussion portion of the um, tonight's proceedings on this application. Okay. So discussion. Anyone have any comments uh, about the application? comment that I'd like to make is that uh, uh, to the applicant, this was certainly a, a well-structured package that you put together. It's well-documented. Uh, you uh, obviously researched the, the ordinance and the requirements for variance and tried to answer each of those, and, and you put together a, a nice presentation. That in itself doesn't uh, make the case, but in addition to that, it appears that all elements, in my mind, uh, all conclusions, all elements of the standards were met fully and, and quite explicitly. 
Uh, it's my feeling. So uh, uh, thank you to the applicant for well documentation and then comment to the board as, as such that um, other than the comments I made earlier, uh, uh, it appears that all elements have been met in my mind. Thank you. Other comments? I, I, again, I, I, I uh, mirror the comments about the completeness of the package. I, mean, I think this is a case study for somebody who wishes to go at it and do the proper and the necessary research. I mean, there's time that's been consumed here and, and dollars spent to satisfy the board in, um, in requesting this. I'm very familiar with the, uh, with the neighborhood because of uh, your next door neighbor, Mr. Hart, and all the questions that were raised during a period of uh, some seven or eight months of having his house for sale about what can or can't be done. So uh, I, I, I thank you for your completeness, and I too feel very strongly that uh, all the elements seem to be <coughs> satisfactory. I think it's notable that the property lines and placement of dwellings in these lots is certainly quite interesting in, in that <laughs> and, and, and does create a unique challenge for anyone in this area. Yeah. So it's quite an in interesting, but that does add flavor and character to the neighborhood. I realize that too. So that's, that's, that's a compliment to the neighborhood. Peter or Rob, you have any comments? The only uh, question I'd have, probably to the, the board here, the significant economic injury that would have resulted from this, how would we? Yeah, let me get to that, um, if I could. And maybe something I, I, in retrospect, wish I would have uh, stated right from the beginning for the applicant, although the applicant did a very good job, notwithstanding maybe flying in the dark a little bit about the standard we apply to uh, approve this. Basically, there's an eight-part test that you have to comply with in order to uh, be approved, and you have to meet each of the elements of that eight-part test in order to uh, obtain approval. And um, uh, what Rob just mentioned is really the second element of uh, the test. Um, and basically what that, that, along with probably number four, I think it is, or I think it's four, uh, maybe the more difficult one to understand, and gets into the, number two gets into the, uh, this one gets into the calculations we've talked about. And basically it requires a showing that the uh, literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty for the applicant. And um, that is defined, practical difficulty is defined as causing uh, significant economic injury to the property owner. And significant economic injury is then defined. So it's like a three-step process to get the ultimate meaning of the definition. Would place the applicant, uh, is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighbor, neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. So this gets into the first mathematical test, and through the, the gloss that's been given to that through the interpretations of this board and Mr. Smith's enforcement is that's basically a majority type t issue. In other words, you have to be, you have to show that at least five of the, excuse me, at least six of the abutting owners, uh, a majority of the abutting owners are also in a non-conforming situation. And if everyone was conforming um, in that area, then to put you, you're, you're not significantly economically injured by requiring you to comply with the same setback. But if everybody else, i.e. the majority of your neighbors, are already in violation, the wisdom of the statute or the ordinance is, we shouldn't put you at a disadvantage to your neighbors, and we should give you some leeway there. So that's the first element, uh, first mathematical test. 
that has to be complied with. And then there's some other ones which we'll go through in a minute as soon as we exhaust all the... Um... Well, why don't, why don't I talk about the other one? Um, it gets into number four, and we have to establish that, that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. And that has the requirement that um, we must establish that it doesn't block an established view, doesn't pose a fire safety hazard, doesn't cast a shadow on an adjoining lot, doesn't reduce the appraised value of adjoining property by more than 10%, or eliminates the, the privacy of an adjoining property owner without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy, and that's why we were asking you about view and those kind of issues. But also, as a part of that element of number four, is that um, the result of the, is defined as the result of the va variance uh, where the structure is larger or cr closer to the road or property line than the average of the nearest 10 principal structures, or in the case of a variance request for an accessory structure, the nearest 10 accessory structures. And this is where you get into your average issue, which is, does the average of those 10 neighbors, uh, is that m less conforming than what you're proposing? If you were asking to go to two feet and the average was 15 feet, obviously that would not meet that test. But um, if the average is 14 approximately, as you've proposed, and your request is to 15, you're less non-conforming than the average of your 10 nearest neighbors. So um, that's the, that element, that particular element. So those are the two most difficult. Um, any other comments or discussion on this particular issue? Let me... I think your, que your, your question on number two was very valid. And, and uh, five or six years ago when I first joined the board, we were just transitioning from the undue hardship standard to the significant economic injury standard. And, and, and <coughs> there was uh, quite a bit of learning and calibration regarding that. And, and let me just state item number two by giving you an example. And th this helped me in the past, and maybe it'll help the newer board members. A literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. The, and uh, another way of saying that in practical terms is that in the residential A district, side setbacks are 25 feet. If, if we literally interpreted the ordinance that that was an absolute number, 25 feet, and we can't violate that under any circumstances, then a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty, in turn causing a significant economic injury, which is a sub-definition of practical dif difficulty. It becomes a little convoluted. But if we say the ordinance states 25 feet, period, on the sides, and we say, you can't build anything or construct or raise a hammer in that 25 feet, then that would be a practical difficulty or significant economic injury if six or more of the nearest neighbors already had dwellings grandfathered into that 25 feet. So that's, that, that is in my simple mind an understanding of what number two means. So if we absolutely interpret the 25 feet as hard and fast, then it's a problem. And, and it is a problem if six, five or six or more of the nearest neighbors don't encroach on that 25 feet. And, it, and it, it, then we must interpret the ordinance as such. But because six or more of the nearest 10 are already in that situation, then we have the right to interpret it as such. So in, in a typical situation, Item number two is, is, is a supported statement, a supported element. I hope that clarifies it a little bit. Any further discussion of this application? Okay, hearing none, what I'd like to do is close the discussion and move to the uh, voting phase. Uh, once again, we have to vote on all eight elements of the request, the application. Um, and the first 
thing we must, the first element is the question of um, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All in favor? Unanimous. Five votes in favor. A literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. The third element. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. All in favor? Five. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All in favor? Unanimous in favor? The practical diff number five, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All in favor? Five in favor, no opposed. Number six, no other feasible alternative to the variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor? All, no opposed. Number seven, the granting of a variance, variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? Five in favor, no opposed. And finally, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor? Five in favor, no opposed. Could I have a motion made to approve the uh, variance request? Motion. I have a motion made to approve the application of Richard R. Armstrong for variance from the strict, strict application of 19, section 19-6-1 of the zoning ordinance. Um, the appellant requests an easterly side property line variance from 10 feet from the required 25 feet and a westerly side property line variance of nine feet from the required 25 feet to do additions at 15 and 16 feet respectively from their side property lines. Could I have a motion, a second on that? Second. All in favor? The motion passes. And I would like also a motion on the fi proposed findings of fact um, that have been proposed on the uh, draft notice of variance decision. Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Uh, the motion is to make findings of fact that Richard and Penny Armstrong are owners of property at 5 Ironclad Road, tax map U08, lot 6, and that the property is located in a residential A district and contains 24,576 square feet of land area with 55 feet of frontage on Ironclad, Ironclad Road and 120 feet of frontage on Singles Road and is therefore a non-conforming lot of record. Uh, can I have a second for that? Second. All in favor? Unanimous, the findings of fact are unanimous, unanimously adopted. I think that takes care of the, uh, the uh, application of the Armstrongs on Ironclad Road. Um, thank you very much for your expert presentation. Can I say one last Sure. Um, it was really difficult for me to get through the zoning document. Uh, Bruce was very helpful. Uh, he brought up things that I would have completely missed, mainly because some of the really important stuff is in the front and the definitions, and you need to know when to go look at the definitions. So I'm sure after crawling through it a few times, it's obvious, certainly obvious to you guys what's going on, but uh, it was not obvious to me, and he was a remarkable resource, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, we do appreciate that. And we also appreciate it. It's kind of like reading the Bible. It's open to interpretation <laughs> at times. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, other business, communications? Mr. Smith, any communications we have? I have nothing. Okay. No other business to come before us tonight? No, sir. Anyone else? Good. Could I have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>